All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Freight Coach. My name is Chris Jolly. I am your host, and I am the Freight Coach. Before we jump into today's episode, as always, thank you guys so much for coming out and listening to this podcast. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. This is the real side of freight, ladies and gentlemen. I do this twice a week long form podcast interviews, and then I also do a daily live show, weekday live show, where I break down industry headlines to most importantly, you guys provide information that you guys can apply utilize and see a meaningful difference in your business and your life. You guys, I only speak to transportation professionals on my content, you guys, because I'm trying to give you guys information from the people who have done what you're looking to do or who are currently doing what you're like looking to achieve so you can see that difference in your business. You guys, there's so much value in talking to those individuals. There's no theory on any of my stuff. And frankly, guys, it's also one of the many reasons why I probably fly this American flag in my office every single day. A, we're the greatest nation on earth, but B, I'm living my American dream and I wanna help each and every one of you guys live your American dream as well. I do have a small favor to ask. If you're not subscribed and you value in what you hear here today, you guys, subscribe and share the show. That's how we are the top ranked transportation podcast out there is because of each and every one of you guys who see value in this, because if you guys see value, your network's going to see value in it as well. All right. I got a very special guest for you guys here today. We are going to talk about his journey in transportation, starting his agency, building his team, and really navigating through the ever-changing freight market that we find ourselves in out there. So I have Mr. Dino Del Grosso here today. So Dino, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Chris. It's my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Now, dude, I appreciate you, man, and taking the time. It's a Saturday, you guys. I know like this is the the hustle day, right? Because this is what everybody says is everybody works on weekends. But Dino and I got on the phone a couple of weeks back and we're both like, hey, Monday through Friday aren't necessarily the best times for us. So let's lock in on a Saturday and let's get this down and really hash this out. So I appreciate you taking the time for me, man. So Dino, how did you get your start in freight, man? What brought you into transportation? First question, Chris, is how long is this show? Because if it's like a 10 minute episode, I don't think I'm going to be able to give you all my, my rundown. <laughs> oh, man, we're here, for, we're here for as long as you need, Dino. You know? No, it's cool. I'll give you a little bit of background my history. I come from a multi-level marketing background. So I started doing multi-level marketing in my 20s and grew a really big organization, a team. And the reason why I got into multi-level, multi-level marketing was because of resi- residual income. And... Residual income to me is the end all. And I'll explain to you why I'm bringing this up, Chris, because, you know, we're talking about transport. Well, this guy's talking multi-level marketing. I don't get it. With my background in multi-level marketing, I basically saw something in transport that could benefit myself in the long run, in the longevity of transport. And I'll tell you exactly why. And it's a quick little story. A buddy of mine got him involved in the multi-level marketing business. And he was a transport broker. And he did it like from the early age of 20. And now we're both in our early 30s. And he's hanging out at my place. I'm teaching him the multi-level marketing business. And I'm going, this guy, doesn't he work? Like in the back of my head, I'm going, I know he's in transport. He's got a family. How is he hanging out with me three hours a day? So I asked him the question, Chris, and I said to him, how do you make money, man? You're always in my house. I don't get it. And he's like, built a good team. I built a good team. And this is what I like about multi-level marketing, he said to me, is the residual income that you were trying to explain to me. And I'm like, how does that work in transport? He basically said, looks like the same thing. You build a team, you get a team who basically either does your dispatch or your operations or this or that, the other. I do the sales. I'm the the guru in sales. And then we put it all together and our customers just keep shipping. They just keep shipping freight. And I was like, okay, well, explain this to me a little bit more. And he basically said, look, I have a customer. And let's ABC. And they move five different shipments a day. My team, basically, we work together and... We move their freight and we make a percentage of what they move. And I'm like, how can you, because to me, I'll be honest with you, Chris, when I was a little kid, I was always taught you get, you, you basically achieve what you do. Okay. If, if you don't work and if you don't work hard, that's okay. You're not going to get what you want in life. Yeah. And for me, Chris, I like the good things. Like I, I like taking trips with the family. I like being able to work nine to two and then 
off till four and then maybe work from four to seven, work my own schedule. I have to be dictated by a boss. You know what I'm saying? I do a desk. Yeah, I got you. Basically said to this guy, teach me. And he said, all you got to do is make a phone call to somebody you know who moves straight. I'm not scared on the phone. I'm not scared to knock on a door. And that's the way I started. So I basically worked with my buddy. I taught him my business. He taught me his business. And he basically brought me on and gave me 40% commission Mm -hmm. on all profits. For the first month, like I basically booked, I don't know, five five appointments a week. So we went to see 20 to 25 different customers in my first month. And that was just me plugging my buddies. Just calling somebody and saying, hey, I know you work for ABC. Do you know who the shipping guy is? Or just questions. Just, hey, who's the guy doing whatever? I'm sorry, Chris, do you want to cut in? Or? I, I think it's because it, what you're explaining there, Dino, is exactly how you need to start, though. Because I think like a lot of a lot of the questions I get is, what do I say on the phone? Or how do I find shippers? I think how do I find shippers is like the top question I'm asked all the time. And it is literally what you're doing right there. It is tapping into your personal network. Who do you know that is in shipping or in transportation? If you don't know, if you, again, you're coming in with no experience, which a lot of people do, they don't really know what to go after. Start with your personal network. I think if you talk to any, it's just like selling cars or selling real estate. It's that, that your close contacts that you know, ask them, do you do this or do you know anybody who does this and really build out from there because not everybody has lead generation software, right? Not everybody knows where to start and that's what it is. It's talk to your own personal network and build out from there. I think that's an often overlooked skill set because I don't know, people say to what you were saying earlier, it can be as easy as calling somebody. It really can be. But at the same time, start with the people who get that warm introduction with somebody in business. It's such an, it's such a less stressful situation when it's somebody who's making that cold, that warm introduction to somebody. Chris, I got to tell you, man, it bamboozles my mind how people are just scared to make a phone call to a buddy yeah, and just ask the question and just say, hey, I know that you know, or your dad, he works at this company and do they do any shipping? That's basically a simple question, right? Is do you know somebody who's in a business where they bring product into their warehouse or they ship from their warehouse? Anyways, so what I would say to people, okay, who are just starting, make a list. It is like comedians, right? They have a beside their bed stand, right? So they wake up in the middle of the night and they think of a joke and they write something down so they don't forget it. Well, I think as human beings, we, as you get older, like me, and you get a little long in the tooth here, Chris, your memory, you forget. So... Get a piece of paper, write down every single person yep. and just basically start tapping into it. And what's cool about that, right? Let's say you say, well, I only have 10 friends or I only know 12 people, but those 12 people probably know 500 people, right? So it's about getting that person to give you a name and so on and so forth. And that's the way it started. That's the way it started for me, Chris. And I, for the first month, booked a few meetings. I got a couple of customers and I started to build. And like a lot of people said, did you get a base salary? No, I never had a base salary. And people are saying, you're crazy. What are you? I wasn't worried because I knew that within three or four or five months, I would have a customer base because, you know, the more doors you knock on, the more people are going to answer. And you're not always going to get yes to say, you know what? I'm going to say something. That a buddy of mine said to me 30 years ago, he says, how many no's did you get today? And I'm like, what? Do you mean how many yeses did I get? He said, no, how many no's did you get? And I would say, well, aren't I looking for a yes? He's like, yeah, you need about 10 no's before you get a yes. Yeah. So go out there and go get some no's. And that's been my philosophy my entire life. I was, how many no's did I get today? Yeah, man. It, dude, and there's a lot of power in that because it's, again, to me, it's like the practice is in the repetition. The confidence that everybody wants is in the repetition. You have to get told no. You have to be told, get off my property. You have to be told yep. all of that stuff. It's part of it. Like, it's not as easy as, oh, just cold call these shippers are going to give you millions of dollars worth of freight and everything's fine. 
you're going to get told no the overwhelming majority of the time. But what I think that does, do you know, at least for me, is that makes me work so much harder when I am told yes. That's what drives me so to, to really service my customer to a level that nobody else ever has because I know that it took 400 no's to get to that one yes of substance. Now, do you get some other yeses where they'll talk to you and you know what, you might move a couple of shipments and then it just doesn't work out long-term because I think that's another thing too is people get hung up on the first time that they are told yes and then they're like, oh, every single time that this person reaches out to me, why aren't they giving me business and everything else? And then they stop prospecting. They stop going for another opportunity because they think I finally got told yes, all my problems are gonna go away, everything's gonna be great. And that's not what it is. You have to keep prospecting. You have to keep reaching out to more and more people. Because every single time, and dude, because like I've been self-employed now for going on three years. Early on, I had to tell myself, I'm one call away from changing my life. I'm one call away from changing my life. I'm one email away from changing my life every single time. Because in between your ears, that's the battle you have to win. That's the only battle you have to win. Because no one's going to fucking stop you from achieving anything but you. Not the 75 no's that you got in a row. That's not going to stop you. You are the only thing that can stop you in those moments. But when you get that, yes, you got to fight for it so much more. Because then you, like, what happens in repetition, man, is you get more and more confident. You get more and more fluid. You can start identifying what your prospects are saying on the phone. And if it took you 12 phone calls to onboard somebody, now you're going to be able to get it down to like six or five or four because you know exactly how to frame your questions to get the right information out of them. Hey, you said a bunch of things, man, like repetition, like between the years. For me, it's mindset, man. If you've got the proper mindset, if you basically want to achieve something, the only person that will stop you from achieving that is you. And you said that as well. And it's repetition, man. It's repetition. It's no, I'm going to hit the pavement, hit the pavement. I'm going to get my yeses and I'm going to go. And that's basically, you know, what started business in the first three to four or five months. I built a little book of business. Maybe I had five or 10 customers max, but I kept prospecting, like you're saying. And I never really had any leads. It was just word of mouth um, asking my existing customers, do you know somebody else? Building a relationship with one of my customers that are solid. And that person basically saying, hey, you know what? The freight that I move, I've got guys that bring us the freight. You want me to give you their name? So my customers would like offer their customers to me. And that's how it just started to grow and grow. And then I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a story about how I landed a really big, yes. like my big customer. Sure. You have basically, so I've got a team of 10 yep. and my team, we basically work this one customer, all of us, and each one of my guys have more than one customer, but this specific customer you know, I'm sad to say, but it's the truth, is about 70% of our business. But they're such a big customer that each one of my guys, okay, we're all making a six-figure plus income and it's strictly commissioned. Nobody gets any base salary. It's strictly commissioned. And they ship a shitload of freight, right? I'll tell you my story. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, but it's me being who I am just... Not quitting, just continue to find a loophole, continue to find an alley, just something. Anyways, I'm, I'm from Montreal and I'm a big hockey fan. You and I were, were discussing sports yeah. the other day. Um, and I'm a big Montreal Canadiens fan. And about, I don't know, 15 years ago, there was talk about a guy called Vinny Le Cavalier. Oh, yeah. He's originally from the Montreal area. He was on the Tampa Bay Lightning. He was the captain of the Bay Lightning. Played his entire career there. And there was talk that Vinny LeCavalier just bought a house in Montreal. So a buddy of mine, knowing that I'm a huge Canadians fan, sent me an email that a friend of his, who's close to Vinny, saying Vinny's purchasing some land in Montreal. Now, that email that he flipped to me, Chris, there was about 200 names on that email. So I said, hey, here's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's 200 names 
that I don't know, but I can use as maybe a warm market. And you're saying, look at a warm market. I basically took the 200 names and if it was a Gmail account or a Hotmail account, I delete it. But the other 75 on that email had a company email attached to it, right? So I basically just sent a generic email out to 75 people saying, hey, my name is Dinoro Grosso. My buddy is a buddy of yours who you might be interested in moving some freight. Plain and simple. Out of those 75, I got about 20 responses. Hey, yeah. cool. And so we started shooting the shit about Vinny LeCavalier because they were on, we were on the same email. So we just talked about that. And basically I said, hey, I hear you, you might be interested in freight or whatever. You move freight, whatever. And I booked out of the, out of the 75 replies, I might've booked about 20 appointments. Yep. One of those appointments, Chris, was a guy who basically his company is I don't know, maybe three miles away from my home. Yeah. Went to meet the guy. We spoke and he said to me, he said, listen. I don't usually, but I like the freight broker that I'm using right now, sure. but I'm going to give you a shot. I'm going to send you a couple emails with stuff that you can quote. Them. That's the way it starts, right? So two, three loads a month for this guy for about six months, six months into our friendship or our shipping relationship. He says to me, I want you to meet our regional manager who's in the Toronto area and Toronto's a pretty big city and introduced me to this guy, started moving freight for this guy. And within about six months, after, this guy became really good friends with said, you know what? You've been doing a pretty good job. I've been speaking to Andy in Montreal. And now this company, by the way, has about 900 branches across North America. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So I plugged into the Montreal area guys. I plugged into the Toronto area guys and the Toronto regional manager said to me, this company, basically we have a bid board yeah. where every single branch posts loads. And would you be interested in joining this bid board? So what do you think I said? I'm like, Dude. Yeah. Oh, right. So I was like, okay, cool. So this is about a year into this. And this is about, I know, about two years into me becoming a freight broker. Yeah. Okay? And at that point in time, I met the people involved on the bid boards, became friends with them, built relationships with them. Anyways, today we're shipping. So I've got a team of 10 and we ship. I don't know, about 30 to 40 loads a day for this specific company. Gotcha. Okay. And if it wasn't for my email that I just. Yeah, dude, I love that. Cause, and that, then how you describe the buildup of it as well, man, because it, again, you think that, Hey, I bid on a couple of loads. Why aren't they publishing my rate? Like I filled out an RFP. Why aren't they publishing my rates yet? Why am I not seeing it? It might not need you yet. Right. Your opportunity is going to come. Dude, it might be a month and a half after. Because like, again, if they let you bid on the freight and they don't tell you no after you've been out, chances are it's just your, it's a waiting game, right? If your opportunity is going to come, you're going to move a couple of loads, then you might not see anything. And then you're going to move a couple more loads. And then it's like, hey, you're doing a really good job with this after six months. Talk to this individual. And then another six months goes by. Talk to this individual. And then you start uncovering things. And it's the process, do you know, that most don't want to commit to. They think that because I called you one time, you should give me access to millions of dollars worth of business. And, and then furthermore, taking that approach that you took right there of just being on a random, how many individuals actually do that, right? Like you're on a chain email with a couple hundred people. How many people actually do that? I would argue probably very few take that approach. And now look what that led to. So it's like you do that, you're moving 30, 40 loads a day with them. And we're talking, how many years did this take to get to this point? Three. It took, listen, before we got to about 30 loads, of day, it took about four years, four to five years, I'd say. That's you know, Yeah. It, like now it's, if we don't get 40 loads, of day, it's because it's slow or whatever, but we don't fret because I keep 
telling my team as well. You know what? This is a beautiful story, right? Because it's not a, it's the truth, but I keep telling my team that you're only as good as your last paycheck. So you got to continue to prospect. You got to continue to make those cold calls. I know we're all busy. But I'm super busy. Chris, this is why we're doing this on a Saturday. It's fine. We can always find a reason to not do something, Dino. Ex- exactly. That is it in a nutshell. You will always make an excuse not to do it or just do it. And I basically tell my guys, you got 30 minute downtime, make a phone call. You got 15 minute downtown, uh, downtime. You know, that guy that you met at the bar or at the restaurant last month or whatever, give him a call. Speak to him for five minutes. You know what I mean? Pick his brain. And there's one thing, Chris, that I've learned over the years is you need to be a good listener, man. A lot of people just talk and talk. Listen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit deeper than that. Stop waiting to talk, though, because there's some people who will do a great job of not talking, but they're not listening. They're waiting to talk again. Yeah, exactly. It's a big difference there. So I, I want to interject and put that in there because and with a lot of these examples, you know, like I'm using myself. I was that. I would. I had a great time talking, but then I would wait to start talking again. I wouldn't really listen to what the individuals are saying because to tie into prospecting and everything, and you might have been going down this route, but prospects will literally tell you everything you need to know if you're actually listening to what they're saying in those moments. Just because they don't need you today doesn't mean that they're not going to need you in a couple of months. And they will tell you, hey, we're not busy right now, or we're good with our current network right now. That's not a never call me again. That's a, hey, maybe follow up with me in 30 or 60 days. Don't inundate their inbox with the fact that you have capacity because surprise, as soon as you say you're with any logistics company out there, they fucking know you have access to trucks, right? What value can you bring to these people in the meantime? And that's what you really need to focus on with a lot of this. Because again, when you listen, they tell you everything you need to know about them. 100%. It's what everybody thinks when they're going to a sales call or a meeting, they got to be the I got to close them. I got to sell them. No, man. It's not about closing. It's, a, it's about listening and building and getting information. Get that information. And slowly, you build that relationship and you get trust. You gain the trust. And then if you do a good job, because the thing is, I really believe it's a cutthroat industry. And I really believe that if you are super honest with your customers and you offer your service, and you really go to bat for them, in the long run, they will remember that. Right. And if it goes for them to choose A or B, they will choose the guy who's been straight with them from the get-go. Don't bullshit. But a long time, you guys, isn't two months or three months or four months. This is over 12, 24, 36. These are a couple of years it takes to get to that point because I didn't mean to cut you off there, Dino, but like I hear okay. what I do is it's, hey, I've been doing this for 90 days. Why do I not have shippers? Or I've been doing this for 180 days. Why am I not? Because it's only been three or six months, you guys. Like how many times have you actually quality follow-up, provided quality follow-up with somebody didn't say, hey, if you have anything for me to bid on, send me your quote. Have you actually dissected what their operation is? Because the beauty about the day and age that we live in now, man, is everything is online. Everything is on Google. Talk to them about a new product launch that their company might have. That's probably a pretty big deal because it probably took that company four years to get to the point to release that brand new product. You know, it, it's just such an oversight because so many people are in the, I got to make 100 calls. I got to move freight today. I got today, today. They're only concerned about today, the transaction today. They're not thinking about that tomorrow. As somebody who's bootstrapping all of my business and paying for everything, I'm thinking, how do I build sustainable revenue for the next 24 months? I'm already thinking about where am I going to be in 2025 at this point. But if I don't put in the work today, none of that will transpire in two years. Hey, plant seeds, plant seeds, and nurture those seeds once they start to grow, man. That's what this business and this industry is about, is just continue to plant, continue to build, continue to nurture, and 
be the hardest worker out there. Like for me, man, it's just about, it's, it's a no, it's a no shit attitude, man. It's, it's an attitude where I know what I need to do. I know that I'm good at what I do, but I got to do it. And if I don't wake up and do it, Nobody else, nobody's going to take care of my stuff, man. It's really easy to think and talk about doing it, but actually applying it, man. It's tough. And I do, I'm just as guilty as that. Like I had to, when, cause like when you start something, like there's no game plan. There's no, cause when you go from being a W2 employee where it is that, Hey, come in at seven o'clock, you're going to work till three thirty four, whatever that looks like. You're used to working in somebody else's routine. You have to cultivate your own routine. You have to build out your own schedule and hold yourself accountable in those moments because no one's going to do that for you. And if you want to build something of substance, you have to legitimately take, I think, 85 steps back and you got to focus on the next hour. Or like when I was first starting out with everything, Dino, man, it was in 30 minutes, like 30 minute increments is all I would focus on because, man, I would have one phone call at eight o'clock in the morning and then nothing for the rest of the day. So what do I do? Do I just kick my feet up or all right, how do I build up from here? How do I prospect? How do I cultivate something out of nothing? Because just like everybody, man, when you start, like you're off of a laptop and a cell phone, just like everybody, and you have to build something out of it. Hey, just to do what you just said about cell phone and a laptop, how cool is that? That's all you really need Correct. in our business to prosper. Yeah. Just think about that. How insane. You, you don't have to have a million dollars of product in your backyard or you don't have to like have this, this massive warehouse or this showroom. All you need is a phone, internet, and a laptop. And it's up to you to get going, man. And you can build an insane business and you can make an insane amount of money doing this. But it, it's really up to you, man. You know what I mean? I'll tell you honestly, Chris, I got buddies of mine that say, you know what? I'd like to come and work with you, but I'm really worried about just starting off at a commission salaries or can you give me a base salary. And I'm like, no. And a good, good guy. Like I know they, they can yeah. really be good, but I'll tell them no. I'm like, Hey, I can give you a 40 to $50,000 base and give you 1% of commission, but you'll top yourself off at 60 grand a year. Yeah. What if I said to you, in your first six months, you're not going to make crazy amounts of money, but within a year to a year and a half, you'll be making six figures. Would you sacrifice that year and a half to two years to do it? The problem is most people say no, Chris. I know. They want that drug, man. They want that salary drug because uh, they think that there's security with that. And, and I didn't mean to cut you off there, Gino, but like, I, it's okay. I had this conversation a lot because it's like, that the, like the salary is, and you look at the current landscape, how many layoffs do we see all the time? Who do you think necessarily gets laid off? There's two types, the lowest performing people and the highest non-justifiable salary. They are axed first. I'm convinced of this, Dino, in some organizations, not all. I, I, I'm doing a lot. I better, agree with you, man. I'm That's doing a lot better good. job of making blanket statements. I think some organizations out there want B minus and C plus players because they want to push that 75 to $125,000 total comp range. And that's all they want. They don't want people who want more than that. And they don't want people who want less than that because then they can grow as a company and they keep that sweet spot in there. And those are the people that they want. But if most individuals didn't realize that if you're currently making that buck 25 for somebody else right now, if you would bust out onto your own, sacrifice, like you said, 18 to 24 months of that salary, you will make triple, if not quadruple that as an agent. You already have the book. There is no limits, man. There, there is, is no limits. We're putting like numbers on. We're saying double or triple or quadruple. It could be 10 times. It could, fuck, I couldn't yeah. really <laughs> underestimate it. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it, maybe, Chris, you know what? And I've come from a background where you got to work, man. You got to basically get up and you got to go to work and you got to 
bust your ass on a daily basis and you will achieve. And some people are just happy at being medium, being mediocre, man. You know what I mean? And I got to tell you, I'm looking for guys who are hungry. I'm looking for people that know what their worth is, what their value is. And it's not $50,000 a year. It's not $75,000 a year. And if you want, that's cool. I respect you. I got no problems with that. But if you're looking to be a baller, okay, this is an industry where you can be big time and you roll up your sleeves and you basically go make a million dollars a year. No problem. And I'm not, I'm not, not exaggerating that's, by saying, dude, you're not exaggerating at all by saying that. So dude, what was it that made you jump out and start your own agency, man? Like you jumped on with SPI. What, like, how has that gone, man? You're growing and everything with there. So what was that moment where, because you said you came in, you were working for somebody else. And then you're like, you know what? I'm busting out on my own. I'm gonna do my own thing. I started with my buddy, right? And yep. I started at a commission salary of 40 points. And somebody offered me a little bit more. A few years into the stint, I basically jumped ship to this other company. And the company that I jumped ship to, there was another person who was at this company before I was like, they were there for a good 10 years and they yeah. built a solid business with the same big customer that I had. Gotcha. So they're recruiting me to come into this company, but I can't really use this customer. But they wanted me because they heard of the business that I built up. And they said, we can basically put you and this person together and you guys can share this customer. And this customer is so big that you can have 20, 30 people on the customer. So they're very smart. And they put us together and she basically did the state to state stuff. And I was the cross-border Canada guy. Yeah. So I did all Canadian moves and anything that crossed into U.S. soil or crossed into Canadian soil was my baby. Long story short, she got green. She saw that I started to do just as well as she did. And she didn't like that I was doing so well. And because she had the seniority over me, the company said, hey, listen, we don't, want, we don't want to let you go, but she's got this problem. She wants to do the entire business for this company. You can stay on, but you can't move freight for this company. And I was like, can we? Come on, man. And, <laughs> but so what happened was that, and there, we're still friends. We're, like, I've got no issues with them. They're a great company. Yeah. But I moved this business to SPI. And it was funny when I first went to SPI, and I got it. I don't think I'm going anywhere for the rest of my life because they're just a fabulous organization. The people behind give you the top notch support. I don't, I can't say one bad thing about this company. I've been with them for the last seven years now, eight years. And it was funny when I met the CEO, we were on the golf course together and he's picking my brain and he's asking me these questions and he's, like, can I see what you brought in last year? last month. And I'm like, sure, no problem. But if I do that, I want X. I want this commission. And he's, if you tell me this is what you're bringing in, you show it to me. You've got X. And from that moment on, I was a marriage in heaven. And I, I've got, I don't have enough good things to say about the entire Silver Pacific the company from Joe Chandler to James and Mike and Anita and everybody behind the scenes. And I can name like another 20 people, but I've gotten nothing but support and carte blanche with anything realistic that I'd bring to the table. And I'm right there with you, man, because like I got back into Braid here back last year. That's when I was just like, Hey, I got to get back into it because I saw the opportunity that is this current market where everybody's sitting here saying that, oh, we can't onboard customers and we can't do this. Can't do that. I like, this is a normal freight market to me, right? Like I know the effort that it takes to bring on customers a substance and the wild West mentality over these last couple of years is gone, right? You're, if you don't bring anything to the table, they're not going to onboard you. But when I, when it was like, for me, meeting 
James and Mike out in Orlando last summer at a conference because like they, they got in and we started doing, we we're talking about that. And then it was just such a natural thing because like in, in dealing with them and then getting in and starting my agency with them and building up, man, I can't go a couple of days without the level of support that they do show. Cause like that back office portion of this stuff, man, is insane. And like the technology that we have access to where, dude, you can just solely focus on your business. And this is like what I tell every sales rep I know that's out there that I talk to is it's like, you do just, it is a sacrifice to go out into a commission only thing for a little bit. But I'm like, man, if you built that book of business up, you are everything that you have right now at your current organization, I would all but guarantee SPI performs at a higher level and you're your own boss. You don't have to answer to anybody. You, you they, send, manage your freight. They support you. They do the credit checks. They do the after hour support if you need it. They have, the, they have everything for you. It's literally as simple as unplugging your fucking laptop from point company A and plugging that laptop in to SPI and you will be making X more in such a shorter period of time if you apply yourself right away. It's funny because I know what I'm good at. And what I'm good at is talking to people. I'm good at making phone calls. I'm Very good at, and I let SPI do what they're good at. And together, it's just easy to, to me. Like, uh, it's easy, man. Like, it's like waking up in the morning. For me, it is easy putting my shoes on, getting behind my laptop and start my day because I know that if I've got something that I need help with, they're a phone call away, man. And they, they plug in. I am right now at the point in my life where I'm so happy that I met with these people eight years ago. And I can't wait for the eight to 12 to 20 to 30 years just because I know they've got my back and they'll support me forever, man. No, dude. So like, how did, how has that helped you build your team internally now? You know, because it's like, you're talking about your team at 10, you got 10 people with you and everything. How, what's that correlation about having that support that SPI brings to the table? So you can dive into building out your team. So you can have that focus on bringing those resources because man, you, you made it very apparent. And when we were texting prior, man, I got to plug my team. I love my team and everything else. So let's talk about that. How has that happened? So listen, my team, it's basically, I've emulated what I started, right? So they basically have carte blanche 24 seven to reach out anybody at SPI. They're part of my team because I brought them on, but they're an independent agent, just like I am. They get the respect of SPI because I'm not just bringing any Joe to the table. SPI has my respect in that sense where they know I'm not just bringing anybody from the street who I'm throwing a bone and you know what I'm saying? So they it's 24 seven access to asking them any question to support and help their business and their business is their own book of business. So I don't have access to John's book of business. John is this independent agent who's under my team because I brought him on board and I've introduced him to SPI and SPI is basically supporting him through my team. And what we do is every so often we get together and I don't even like, I speak to them maybe once a week. Yeah. That's the cool part is that it's not that I don't want to talk to my guys on a daily basis. They're self-sufficient. They know what they need to do to bring in whatever they want to bring in. And SPI has given them the tools to do it. And now it's up to them to build their book. And like, I've got nothing but good things to say about my entire team as well. They're a great bunch of people. They work really hard. And here's the thing. I want people to understand on this podcast, Chris, that if you're not interested in really working hard and you can work hard for five years, you can work hard for 10 years, work hard for 20 years. This may not be for you. Right. But if you put in some hard effort, you're going to reap the benefits. And what do I mean about hard? Like people say, what are you working? Seven days a week, 24 seven? I'm hardcore Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I do nothing, man. I do what I want to do. Yeah. 
But Monday to Friday, whether it's at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., and I, I work till 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. or 5 p.m., whatever it is, okay, it's whatever I want to bring in. If I want to make 200 grand, I'll work for 200 grand. If I want to bring in 300 grand, I'll bring in 300 grand because I'll just put the extra effort into it. And that's what this is about. Hope that the people that are listening can understand that I'm about, all about you as an individual, man. You're the guy or the person who's got to do what they want to do to get to where they want to get to. And that's the beauty of the whole agency model. Because all of this was like foreign to me for the majority of my career in freight. I had no idea what this even really was. And that's true, man. As it's dude, if I would just challenge anybody out there like we were talking about. If you're out there working 80, 70, 80 hours a week now for somebody else, and you can legitimately, to your point, you know, like you, you work, you go hard Monday through Friday, right? When I was building up, yeah, I was, I had, I could always find something to do seven days a week if I wanted. But now, as I've become more and more efficient with my time, my energy, when I'm at work, I'll do more between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. than most will do for fucking two full days of sitting at their desk. Yeah, man. And, we'll I it. It. and for me, it's like, that's what it is. It's like, I, now that I don't get, fucking worn out from every direction working for somebody else and I can just come in and do me every single day I get so much more accomplished in that time frame and that's the thing it's if you want to make six figures or you want to make two three four hundred thousand dollars a year whatever that looks like you can do it it takes a shitload of effort but you can do it and then you have to remove the current structure that you're used to working in to achieve that you don't have to work 120 hours a week for somebody else to get to that level you can legitimately work 50, 60 hours a week for yourself and make a lot more. It takes time and effort, but being an agent, it's out there and it's, it's like the business is already ready for you. You just gotta, you just gotta go. That's it. You gotta put Dude, If you're working 60 to 70 hours a week for somebody and you're doing okay, if you would be doing that for yourself, you'd be making double the money. Easily. I'm not, there's no exaggeration here at all. Because if you're a person who's not scared to pound the pavement and you're doing 50, 60 hours a week for somebody else, do that 50, 60 hours a week for yourself, man. And you are going to be like, you're going to be blown away. I what bet you what you'll realize, Dino, is out of that 50, 60 hours you're working for somebody else right now, you're actually only putting in about 20 hours. Because you're fucking around to fill yeah. time. But if you, when you're out on your own, and that's when it's, dude, I was only working part time effort essentially. Now, if I put full time effort in, you'll see the benefits. And again, it's take, don't you know, take my word for it, but like, it's really nice getting an email every Friday. Here's your commission for this week. And it's all clearly laid out. There's no Venn diagram of, oh, if you do this and hit that, you'll get this multiplier. It's no straight. Here's what it is. Have a great day. We love you. You love us. Let's go. And that's as complex as it is. Dude, I love that. <laughs> you know what's so cool about working for SPI? Number one, every Thursday, my commissions get deposited into my bank account. I think in the eight years that I've been with them, there's been two or three discrepancies where I've said, hey, I think this or that and whatever. I don't have to worry about insurance, about a truck breaking down, about somebody's sister didn't want to come into work today and his girlfriend told him she's not allowed to drive a truck. And dude, I am, I love at the end of my work day on Friday, I'm done. I just don't have to worry about a thing and they take care of everything. Like how many places do you work where you move freight from Monday to Friday, get paid the week after where they haven't collected their money yet. There's, they've got $10 million bank loan or they've got a role that's got to continuously pay carriers where I don't have to worry about that, man. I just got to get some customers, move my freight, 
then at the end of the day, say thank you very much. It, it, like legitimately is that simple, man. It's It really is. It, it, like, yeah, man. It, I was like, dude, I just think that if you're out there, and especially with the market that we're in right now, and maybe it's your company that you're working for that's been in the news about laying off people and you're questioning, am I next? There is an opportunity out there for you. It just takes a fucking work ethic. And I know that's hard to come across sometimes, but sometimes it's great to have your back against the wall and not have a single option but to succeed. Because if you're truly that badass sales rep that we all probably tell ourselves every time we pick up the phone, you shouldn't be doing it for anybody but yourself. And that opportunity is afforded with you as an agent to get out there and build your future for what you want and get compensated for what you feel that you're worth right now. It's out there. But uh, Dino, I don't want to take up too much. Of it. It's Saturday, man. You said that it is your family time. I just want to leave it. I appreciate you telling your story, man. It's inspiring. The, the drive that you have right now, man, is it's like, I love talking to other people who are out there, man. Cause dude, I want to fucking cold call right now. It's Saturday afternoon. Let's go. You know what I mean? Let's go. You know what? I really appreciate you having me on the show, man. I just want to people know if you are that guy, if you know what you're worth, okay, and you've been working your ass off and there is a light at the end of the tunnel, man. You can pick up the phone. You can call me, call SBI. I am there. I can help you. I know you can help them, Chris. And just... Don't be shy, man. Don't be shy. Do what you need to do. Take care of yourself. And at the end, like at the end of the day, whatever you put into something is what you're going to get. And if you're looking for a way out, give me a call. Chris, you can, if people ask, give them my name, give them my number. I'd be more than happy to give them some coaching, some advice on what they need to do, or if they're looking to make a change. I'm their guy. Yeah, man, I offer that all the time. If you want to just hear it from somebody who's not, like, again, call. Reach out to me, DM me. You guys know how to get a hold. I'm very visible on social media. People know how to find me on there. And if you guys have any questions for Dino, yeah, let me know. I'll put you in direct contact with him. But if you guys have made it this far in the episode, realistically, you're already subscribed. But if you're not and you heard value and you got and you saw value in what you heard here today, you guys, subscribe and share. Rank that show. Get it out there, you guys. That's how we have grown into the top transportation podcast is because of each and every one of you. Because if you guys see value, your network's going to see value in this as well. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And we'll be talking to you soon.